Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Yeah, welcome to the lectures in chemistry and the topic on atomic structure and chemical bonding. My name is Mangala Sundar and I am in the Department of Chemistry as a professor in the Indian Institute of Technology, Madras, Chennai. My email addresses are given here for you to correspond or for you to uh, request additional information. Okay. This is the first of a number of lectures on solutions to a few important differential equations. Okay. So, the lecture title is uh, power series method. There will be several lectures on this and this is important for students who would like to understand the mathematics behind and also the solutions behind the uh, problems that we have discussed so far, the harmonic oscillator, the hydrogen atom and even particle in a box where the solutions appear to be simple enough for you to write down. But there is a general method and the power series method is something that is very well known in the mathematics of the solution of uh, differential equations, second order and partial differential equations. But I shall illustrate what is minimally required for us to understand the method and will not worry so much about the convergence of the solutions, the uniqueness of these solutions and so on. That is obviously the second level reading if you are interested in the more abstract mathematical nature of the solutions. Here we are trying to handle the practical problems and try to appreciate why the solutions are the way they are. We will start with the two elementary differential equations for which you already know the solution, but the method of power series will also be shown to tell you how such methods work for the more complicated equations. The purpose of this series of lectures is to follow up with the three uh, equations that you have already encountered, namely the Hermite differential equation for the harmonic oscillator. The second one is the Legendre differential equation which you have seen now in the form of the solutions to the angular part of the hydrogen atom namely the spherical harmonics Legendre and associated Legendre polynomials and the third equation is the Laguerre equation. The Laguerre equation is the one that you saw as giving you the solutions to the radial part of the hydrogen atom. Therefore, this uh, whole week or whatever period that the next few lectures will contain some details of the mathematics. Let us start with the first simple equation, not even second order, but we will start with the first order. All of you know that the differential equation dy by dx minus ky is equal to 0 has the solution y of x, which is a function, y is a function of x as some constant a times a to the kx okay because that's immediate because then you know dy by dx gives you k a e to the kx which is ky and therefore this is that equation okay now let's illustrate the power series method for this differential equation to begin with so let me write propose a solution for y of x as an infinite series containing uh, all the terms starting from n equal to 0 to infinity starting from n equal to 0 and going up to infinity a n x raised to n. This is a short representation for the term a naught plus a 1 x plus a 2 x square plus etcetera plus a n x raised to n plus and so on. It is in an infinite series. Now, let us try and understand this method using this particular form of the solution. Okay. We propose this as a solution and then determine the constants if we can. Okay. dy by dx, if I take the derivative of this expression, 
okay. then you know A naught goes away and A 1 is the first term that is non zero. Then you have 2 A 2 x plus you have 3 A 3 x square plus and so on and the term that you see here as a general term gives you n a n x raised to n minus 1 plus and so on. And this can be written in the form of a summation as n equal to 1 to infinity n a n x raised to n minus 1. You can also see that from here. Okay. Since n equal to 0 does not contain any powers of x, the derivative of this term will get rid of the a 0, but every other term will have n a n and will have x raised to n minus 1 and that is what I have written here. Now, the differential equation that you are trying to solve is d y by d x minus k y is equal to 0 and therefore, let us write this as a naught plus a 1 x plus a 2 x square plus a n x raised to n plus and so on. This is the k y term multiplied by k y. So, let me write this as k y minus d y by d x is equal to 0 and then subtract to the derivative namely minus a 1 d x is gone plus 2 a 2 x plus 3 a 3 x square plus etcetera and the nth order term if you have to write in here you will have to write this as n a n x raised to n minus 1 plus n plus 1 a n plus 1 x raised to n plus and so on. So, the general term if you look at it is if we arrange them in the order of coefficients of various powers of x if we write down the coefficient of various powers of x, uh, x raised to 0 that is constant. If you look at the constant, it is k a naught on the first uh, this one and then minus a 1 is equal to 0 or a 1 is equal to k a naught. What is the next term that you see? What you see is 2 a 2 power of x is 2 a 2 plus k a minus minus k a 1 is equal to 0 k a 1 yes this is the x raised to 1 power the coefficient has this relation. Therefore, what you have is a 2 is equal to k a 1 by 2 and a 1 is already there as k a naught. So, you have k square a naught by 2. So, you have a 2 and the third if you write the x raised to uh, 2 x square then the term is 3 a 3 minus k a 2 is equal to 0 k a 2 is equal to 0. Okay. Therefore, you have a 3 is equal to k a 2 by 3 which gives you k a 2 is already given by that therefore, it gives you k cube a naught by 3 factorial. Remember now all the constants are expressed in terms of one undetermined constant a naught okay. and that is what you should expect anyway because this is a first order differential equation. Therefore, the general solution has only one undetermined constant and now that constant turns out to be the a naught. So, what is the general uh, term for this? The general term if you do a n following this it will be k raised to n by n factorial a naught and so on. Therefore, now you have found the solution for the differential equation namely y is equal to sum over n equal to 0 to infinity a n x raised to n is given by a naught plus a naught x plus k x plus a naught k square by 2 factorial x square plus a naught k cube by 
3 factorial x cube and so on here look at all these answers ok. A 3 is k cube by 3 factorial a naught a 2 is k square by 2 factorial a naught a 1 is k a naught and a naught is a naught of course. So, what you have is essentially a naught into 1 plus k x plus k square x square by 2 factorial plus k cube x cube by 3 factorial plus and so on plus k raised to n k n x raised to n by n factorial you see. This is nothing but the exponential k x this is the power series for exponential k x ok series. Therefore, you see y is equal to a naught e to the k x where there is one constant undetermined is the solution to the differential equation dy by dx minus k y is equal to 0 ok. So, this is very elementary. So, it is easy to see and we have not touched the question of whether this exponential the representation and the power series representation whether the, the power series converges and so on. You know that the exponential k x uh, keeps on increasing as x increases and is unbounded as x becomes infinite and so does the power series. So, therefore, there are questions about the convergence questions about the uniqueness question we will not discuss in this case of course, it is easy to show that this is a unique solution and this is one way of looking at this. The reason for doing this is that one more equation and this will give you the general process by which the three equations I indicated earlier the Hermite's equation, the Legendre equation and the Laguerre equation how they are solved using the relations. Now, what I did not specify to you is what is known as a recurrence relation in the whole process. So, let me just indicate that. The recurrence relation is essentially the coefficient a n plus 1 how is it connected to the previous coefficient a n ok. Now, if you look at that the coefficient a n plus 1 is connected to the coefficient k a n by this relation k by n plus 1 ok. Now, you can see that when n is 0 this is k times uh, a 1 this is a 1 and therefore, it is k times a naught. When n is 2 it is k by pre a 2 this is a 3 this will be a 2. So, the recurrence relation tells you the relation between the coefficients in some form such that they can be generalized and the result that you saw here namely this result a n is equal to k raise to n n factorial is a repeated substitution of this into a by a n minus 1 and then a n minus 1 by a n minus 2 and a n minus 2 by a n minus 3 and so on. So, finally, you get to this ok. So, this is the recurrence relation and this is the uh, final coefficient that is determined in terms of the undetermined coefficient ok. Now, another equation for which you also know the solution we will discuss that this is d square y by d x square minus omega square y is equal to 0. Second order differential equation and all of you know the solution from the particle in a box uh, for this that let us write plus y square thing that is the one that you have been dealing with. Uh, of course, minus y square will give you exactly the same relation that you already had. So, for d square y plus omega square y we will do that and you know that the solution of y of x is a cos omega x plus b sin omega x and for a particle in the ring you were using this solution y is equal to a e to the plus i omega x plus b e to the minus i omega x they are both equivalent anyway ok. Because if you expand the exponential using cos and sin and the cos and sin I will write this by a different constants a prime and b prime ok and you can relate these constants to each other. The general power series method is something that we should look at for this problem and this will make you familiar with the remaining parts of the, uh, the lectures on this uh, topic. Now, 
the differential equation that we have to solve is d square y by d x square plus omega square y. So, let me just go back and what I have written. So, if you take the second derivative, the second derivative is the expression that I am just copying here. So, d square y by d x square is given by this term, let me highlight all of that is given by this term, okay. all these things is an infinite series and then the differential term namely the, the omega square y is this term omega square a naught a 1 x a 2 x all these this is the omega square term. So, this is the omega square term and this is the d square y. Then you collect the powers of the individual x's namely uh, x raised to 0 which is a constant and if you look at that you see it is 2.1 times a 2 plus omega square a naught that is 0. The coefficient of x is 3.2 times a 3 here this term this term and the corresponding the omega square term for the power of x is this term omega square times a 1 and then you can write down a few more terms namely 4.3 4 times 3 uh, a 4 plus omega square a 2 is 0 5 times uh, 3 a 5 plus omega square a 3 and equal to 0. There are, so, you see that there are two independent sequences of relations. One sequence involves a naught and then to a 2 the next that sequence contains a 2 to a 4 and the things that I have not written down a 4 to a 6, a 6 to a 8 and so on. So, that involves only the even indices. The other sequence is the one which is marked in green here. It involves a 1 and the relation between a 1 and a 3 and then the relation between a 3 and a 5 and then between a 5 and a 7. So, you can see that the odd index coefficient odd indexed coefficient a 1, a 3, a 5 they are all connected to a 1. The even indexed coefficient are all connected to a naught. That is not surprising that we have only two undetermined coefficients because it is a second order differential equation. It requires two conditions to be fulfilled and for the particle in the box if you recall you did that for the box at one point psi of x is equal to 0 and psi of x is equal to L 0 you put that in those two conditions. They determine with the other uh, uh, boundary condition they determine both the A and B. Therefore, we need two undetermined coefficients and everything else can be written in terms of them. So, let me write now, therefore, the general relation between these coefficients. Okay. The general relation is A 2 n that is even index A 2 n is minus 1 raised to n omega to the 2 n divided by 2 n factorial A 0. A 2 n plus 1 is minus 1 n plus 1 omega to the 2 n plus 1 divided by 2 n plus 1 factorial a 1 by omega. Okay. Quickly what does this mean? If n is 1 a 2 is minus 1 raised to n. So, it is minus omega 2 n is omega square 2 n factorial is 2 a naught. Okay. Now, you see the relationship between a 2 and a naught. a 2 is minus omega square by 2 a naught no problem and a 4 is minus omega square divided by 4 here this one a 4 is minus omega square a 2 divided by 4 into 3 4 times 3 and a 2 is already a minus therefore, it is plus omega raised to 4 it also contains an omega square and it is a naught divided by 4 3 2 1. So, it is 4 factorial. So, a 4 is 4 factorial omega 4 a naught. So, it is easy to see that this generality is here that a 2 n is minus 1 raised to n a 4 is plus a 2 a 6 will be minus a 6 and so on you can see that 
Therefore, this is the recurrence relation between uh, the coefficients in the even n and this is the recurrence relation likewise between the coefficients in the odd indexed n. Now, n is equal to 1, 2, 3, etcetera. Okay. Remember the power series for cosine omega x. Cosine omega x is 1 minus omega square x square by 2 factorial plus omega 4 x raised to 4 by 4 factorial minus and so on. And the power series for sin omega x is omega x minus omega x whole cube divided by 3 factorial plus omega 5 x raised to 5 by 5 factorial minus and so on. You will see that these two coefficients basically lead to exactly those power series starting from a 0, a 2, a 4, a 6, etcetera. They all correspond to the cosine power series and the series a 1, a 3, a 5, a 7, etcetera, they all correspond to the coefficients of the sine series okay, with the fact that it is a 1 by omega which is needed because otherwise it will become omega raised to 2 n. So, this a, omega is a constant anyway. So, we have redefined the constant and this is the cosine series. So, now you can therefore write the final solution as the following namely y of x is equal to a cos omega x plus a here uh, is our uh, a naught ok, a naught and then you have a 1 by omega sin omega x which is the same as what you had earlier written a cos omega x plus b sin omega x ok. So, the power series method is something that is the underlying uh, uh, the algebraic tool through which one obtains solutions for complicated differential equations and the power series method is very well known for a special class of uh, differential equations leading to what are known as special functions and some of the examples of these special functions that you will see in physics and mathematics and also sometimes in chemistry are Bessel functions. The differential equation is called the Bessel differential equation, Legendre functions and the associated Legendre polynomials coupled with the phi part they are called the spherical harmonics, Legendre functions. These are called the polynomials, they are all various powers, we will see one of them and then we have the Hermite polynomials or Hermite functions and then log air functions. functions or log air polynomials and then there are others like the Chebyshev, uh, it is often written in many different ways Chebyshev C C. Sometimes people put a T in front of this too, Chebyshev Russian uh, mathematician, Chebyshev polynomials and so on. Therefore, the differential equation method the solution of which using the power series is something that has been well established and the physicists uh, like Schrodinger and many others had earlier studied the differential equations and they, they saw that the mathematics of the hydrogen atom and the mathematics of some of the atomic and the molecular chemistry problems go back to the polynomials and the methods which were discussed in mathematics independently of quantum mechanics and therefore, they bridge the gap between the known mathematical results and the unknown the new problem of the quantum mechanics or the problem of quantum mechanics and so you can see that the fusion between the two is a very very well studied mathematical technique. We will see a few examples as part of this course and uh, we will see more of it in the Hermite polynomial in the next lecture. Until then thank you very much.